Hi fellow researchers, I am starting a series of videos on uh, different kinds of experimental designs uh, which have been classified under five general categories. Pre-experimental designs, true experimental designs, quasi-experimental designs, ex post facto designs and factorial designs. In this regard, today's short video will take up the first kind of experimental case study that you can design as a pre-experimental design. So uh, please watch all the videos in this series as I put them up on the channel so that you get an idea of the different kinds of studies and what are the advantages and disadvantages of each if you are planning to use them for your research study. Let's get started. So just before we start, uh, this is a type of a pre-experimental design which uh, cannot explain the cause and effect relationship because uh, either the independent variable doesn't vary in this kind of research or the experimental and control groups are not comprised of equivalent or randomly selected individuals. So you might ask me then why are you teaching us this design or why is it useful? So these designs are useful or helpful only for forming a tentative hypothesis that should be followed up with a more controlled study. So this is just to set up your hypothesis just to get a confirmation of your hypothesis and then follow it up with a much more detailed and organized research design. So let's learn what this is all about. So the one shot experimental case study is probably the most primitive type of experiment that you might call as research. So here an experimental treatment is introduced. So you can see on your screen what I mean by an experimental treatment. And then a measurement is introduced or a measurement, a post test of some sort is administered to determine the effects of the treatment. All right. So you might say that uh, you take people with high blood pressure and then you give them all a drug and then after three months of administering the drug, you measure their pressure again. Simple design, All right. very simple. But you can see from the research design itself that it has a low internal validity because it will not be possible for you to determine whether the low blood pressure or the post test blood pressure is a result of the drug that you have administered or the result of the experimental treatment per se. So many other variables could have influenced the blood pressure as well. Right. So it could be a better diet or exercise or something else. So perhaps the characteristics or behavior observed after the treatment existed or existed before the treatment as well. So the reality is that with a single measurement or observation, you have no way of knowing whether the situation has changed or not, let alone whether it has changed as a result of the intervention. Let's take another example. So this kind of a one shot experimental case study is the root of many common misconceptions. For example, you see here a child is sitting on the ground on a damp rainy day. And the next day the child has a sore throat and a cold. Now you may conclude that sitting on the damp earth caused the child to catch the cold. All right. So you may start thinking like exposure to cold damp ground that will become the TX has led to the child having a cold which will lead to become the OBS right or the measurement. However, the cold may have been caused by a transmission from other adults or other children a virus transmission may have nothing to do with the cold wet ground and there could be other reasons as well because of the sore throat. Right? There could be a pre-existing infection, there could be a bacterial infection, there could be allergies. We don't know what the sore throat has been caused by. We cannot just say that the cold wet ground has led to the child catching cold and sore throat. So this is the problem with a one shot experimental research design and this will lead to superstitious folk beliefs. For example, where people say Friday the 13th is very unlucky or if you walk under a ladder, you will have bad luck. So in research studies, you cannot have a very simple or a primitive research design as I have just explained. Uh, but yes, like I said, the use of it is just set it up to get an idea of your hypothesis, to set up your hypothesis and then follow up the investigation of the hypothesis with a more detailed research design. So do not confuse this with a qualitative case study design. Case study research involves extensive engagement in research setting. So this is a one shot experimental case study and it is simple to carry out and its results are for all intents and purposes kind of meaningless. All right. So in my next video, 
I will introduce a new case study design or rather a new design, a research design or experimental design. It will again be a pre-experimental design called a one group pre-test post-test design. And we'll know what the benefits or the disadvantages of that design are as well. Thank you for watching today's video and thank you for supporting the channel. Bye for now.